Hey guys, so I've got the phone set up now. Uh, I want to show you how this thing runs. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on. So what's really cool here is that uh, when you touch on the unlock button you have some options. You can slide up to go straight to the telephone. Let's go back. Uh, slide up to go to the telephone, slide down to go to SMS or MMS. To the left to go to camera and to, to the right just to uh, unlock it. Um, also for the camera, which is very interesting, uh, you don't even have to go to the lock screen for the camera. If you want to go straight to the camera, right here on the, on the bottom right hand side is a button, which is the, the shutter button for the camera. You can just press that and it will go straight to the camera. I think that's pretty nifty if you want to take a quick picture. So let's get out of here. Let's go back here. So, so typically you just want to unlock the phone. Uh, this is the home screen. Uh, you got some cool default widgets that come from Motorola. These circle things are pretty cool. On the left hand side, the big circle, you have the clock and the date. You can click on that to take you to your alarm clock. Yeah, in the middle, you have weather. Uh, and you can set it up with different locations. And uh, when you set it up with different locations, it's got this little cool animation that shows, uh, as well as information on how the weather is in that, in that particular location. So here you can add another city. I have it set for German language for, for my better half who's using this phone. So here you also have information on the battery, but if you flip this circle over, there's a settings page where you can indicate uh, what notifications you want to get in terms of SMS or missed calls or your mailbox. Um, as you can see here, the colors are very vibrant. Um, this is the Super AMOLED screen. Uh, the colors are just very vivid uh, and really stand out. When you're sliding from or you know scrolling from screen to screen you'll see that it's pretty smooth. The Intel Atom processor does a pretty good job of keeping up with things. Um, let's go to the app drawer here. You can see here that has absolutely no problems keeping up with um, the requirements or you know the fast scrolling back and forth doesn't seem to have any problems at all uh, a couple of neat and different features here um, you can actually get to kind of a toggle setting where you can quickly you know, set options for um, whether you want to have it on silent, your wireless, your Bluetooth, GPS, and so forth, just by coming to the home screen, coming to the home screen, and then scrolling uh, one more screen that way. Yeah, uh, and it'll take you to this kind of like a, a toggles type of thing. Here at the bottom, you can go into your settings, into your regular menu, um, and you know, change anything that you need to change in there. Again, you can see you know, how smooth things roll here. Um, by default, when you get the phone, uh, it only has as many home screens as you have um, apps for. So uh, th there aren't any blank home screens by default. Uh, as you build up your different home screens, if you need more home screens, you just scroll all the way to the right, um, past the last home screen to the right, and you have an option here. You can either have a, a default template um, that you can use, or you can just get a blank page so you can start building your next page of, of apps. So let's just throw a couple things on here. And again, you can see that uh, it runs actually pretty smoothly. Let's throw on a widget. Let's throw on a widget for currents. OK. 
Okay, let it synchronize. And see here that loads up pretty quickly. Now I had um, heard initial reports about this particular phone with the Intel processor having problems running um, Google Chrome, uh, but I think they've fixed the problem because you can open up Google Chrome and things run just fine. Here's Google. Let's try a website here. Let's go with New York Times. Going over to the website, and you can see that the browser is pretty pretty snappy. It's it's pretty responsive. We're in mobile mode, so let's go over to the desktop version so we can check out the pinch to zoom. So we're in the um, the full version now, uh, and pinching to zoom, you can see that it's pretty quick, pretty responsive. Redraw it pretty pretty quickly. Scrolls without any issues. So overall, it's pretty responsive. Uh, this little two gigahertz Intel Atom processor seems to be able to keep up with things just fine. So that's the, the, the Chrome browser. Let's try the default browser. Let's see here. Let's try the New York Times here as well. I don't think I don't think I can get to the desktop version though with the default. Android browser. Oh, yeah, you can. All right, so here we go. Here is the default Android browser. You can see that pinch to zoom works just fine, although it doesn't doesn't seem to resize the text for when you when you zoom in. Interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Um, so you have your standard fare of apps, widgets, music. Um, let's try Flipboard so you can see how how nicely this operates. So no stuttering. Seems to keep up just fine. Try Google Currents. Doesn't seem to be any stuttering. Seems to run just fine on here. The pictures are taking a little bit to load up, but that might just be the quality of my connection. Um, I think I have a 100 megabit router down here, although that shouldn't make a difference. So pictures seem to take a little bit of time to, to load up. I don't know if that's normal compared to a couple other phones here in a little bit. But I would say overall, This is running pretty good. You can see the, the colors are, again, really vibrant, really stick out. So that's, that's about it. Um, overall, this, uh, this is not too bad of a performer here. So leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks.